Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2 Lesson 4 on Geometric Terminology. We've already seen a bunch of geometric terminology so far. I mean, anytime we name something, it's a piece of terminology. Point, ray, line, segment, right? Angle, adjacent angle, vertical angle, supplementary, complementary. But in anything that you study, there's always going to be vocab, there's always going to be language that we need to have in common so that when I talk to you, it doesn't sound like it's Greek coming out of my mouth, although a lot of geometry was born in Greece. Anyway, more on that in high school level geometry. Today, we're going to be looking at additional pieces of terminology that we need you to have as we move forward in our geometric work. So let's get into the first of those right now in exercise number one. Here we go. Terminology, the specific vocabulary for a particular field of study. Exercise number one. The diagram below shows segment AB with point M plotted on it. A 10 centimeter ruler is given for measurement purposes, primarily so you don't have to break your own out. Letter A, what is the length of AB? This is known as the measure of the segment. Well, I, I don't think this is going to be very hard. In fact, let's do it together, right? When I actually look at this thing, I can tell because A is at the zero point and B is at the eight point that the measure of AB is eight centimeters. Now, you might say to yourself, wait a second, why doesn't that AB have like a little line segment over it or a little ray or, you know, a little, you know, whatever over it? Well, whenever we've got two letters sitting beside each other like that in geometry and there's no symbol across the top, what we are literally talking about is the distance between points A and B or the length of line segment AB. So the length of line segment AB is eight centimeters. Let's keep going and maybe move this out of the way. Choice B or letter B. <laughs> what is the measure of segments AM and BM? All right, simple enough. Pause the video now. Go ahead and figure out what the measure of segment AM is and what the seg measure of segment BM is. Should be pretty easy. Go ahead and do that. All right, AM and BM. It's very, very easy. AM starts at zero, goes to four. So clearly it's got a length of four centimeters. And likewise, BM also has a length of four centimeters. You can do that in a variety of ways, but that should be pretty obvious. Now, our first piece of terminology for the day in letter C. Point M is called the midpoint of segment AB. Why does this term make sense? So why does it make sense to call M the midpoint of segment AB? Try to write something down for letter C. Well, you could write down a variety of things. You could say, well, it's because M lies in the very middle of the line segment, or because point M lies literally halfway between points A and points B. Any answer like that would be perfectly right. So what a midpoint does on any segment is it lies at a place where it creates two segments that are each half the length of the original segment and are the same length as each other. Every line segment has one and only one point right in its middle. And we call it the midpoint. Let's keep going with the idea of a midpoint. Oh, I love this problem. It really messes with you, but here we go. Exercise number two. In the diagram below, points A, B, C, D, and E all lie on a straight line, are all collinear. Point C is the midpoint of segment AB. Point D is the midpoint of segment AC, and point E is the midpoint of segment CD. If the length of AB is 40, what is the length of EB? This is kind of cool. All right, what I'd like you to do is play around a little bit with this problem, given the knowledge that what midpoints do is they sit at the very middle of a segment and divide it, if you will, into two segments that have equal lengths. Play around with this and see if you can figure out how long segment EB is. Mm 
All right, well, let's just do a little bit of labeling. This is kind of fun. We know that AB, right, that's got a length of 40. And we're told that point C is the midpoint of AB. So that tells me that AC and CB are both 20 units. Now we're told that point D is the midpoint of point AC. Well, that means AD must be 10 units and DC must be 10 units. Finally, we're told that point E is the midpoint of point CD, which tells me that DE must be five and EC must be five. I don't have a lot of room in there now. Finally, we wanna know the length of EB. Well, EB goes from E all the way to B. From E to C, we have five units. From C to B, we have 20 units. So the length of EB is five plus 20 or 25 units, whatever those units are, centimeters, inches, miles, doesn't matter. All right, midpoints, pretty easy. Let's keep going. All right, exercise number three, right? Why do segments have midpoints, but lines do not? Think about this some. Well, hopefully, and again, anytime I've got this icon of my thinker, right? It's really something, a question that I want you to kind of ponder about physical space and about something having to do with geometry. And it's this very simple reason, right? Midpoints, or sorry, segments, whoops, segments have lengths. But lines have infinite lengths and therefore no middles. Or how about this, no middle point. Right? So it's easy enough to say, look, if I've got a line segment that's 10 centimeters long, the midpoint is gonna be that point on the line segment that divides it into a five and a five. Even if I had a very, very long line segment, a line segment that went from Earth out to the sun, right? It would still have a length, whatever that length is, and then I could find a point that divides it into two segments that are half the length of the original and equal to each other but a line itself has an infinite length, right? So there is no way to really divide that in two. There's no way to nail it down and go, yeah, that point right there, that point's in the middle of the line. I mean, I don't know, would that be like the center of the universe maybe? I don't know what the midpoint of a line would be exactly, but I kinda like the center of the universe. I'm gonna have to think about that a little more. Anyway, let's keep moving on. All right, segments and angle bisectors. All right, so we can take something that's got a measure, like a segment or an angle, and we can cut them in half with other geometric objects. And that's the idea of a bisector, right? A bisector is a geometric object that cuts another geometric object in half, or at least it cuts it into two portions that have equal measures. So let's take a look at exercise number four. In the diagram below, angle BAC and ray AD drawn from its vertex point A, or has ray AD drawn from its vertex point A. Letter A, what is the measure of angle BAC? All right, well, this is simple enough. You know, pause the video for a moment, look here, write down the measure of angle BAC. 
Now, as always, the only thing we have to be careful about in terms of our protractor and measuring angles is whether we're using sort of the inside scale or the outside scale. Keep in mind that angle BAC is obviously an obtuse angle. It's obviously an obtuse angle, so it must have an angle greater than 90 degrees. And in this case, we're going to be using the inside measuring track and specifically the measure of angle BAC is equal to 140 degrees. Right? Right here. This one I can draw on. Letter B, explain how you can tell that ray AD bisects angle BAC. All right? Again, I'd like you to pause the video for a moment and think about how you can tell that ray AD, right, this thing, bisects angle BAC. Take a moment. Now remember, the whole idea of a bisector, whether you're cutting a segment in half or an angle in half, is it's another geometric object, in this case a ray, that takes a geometric object, in this case an angle, and divides it into two angles that have equal measure and that are half of the original. Well, what we can do is we can easily look on this diagram and we can look at angle DAC. But angle DAC, right, and its measure, the measure of angle DAC is equal to 70 degrees. And since 70 degrees is equal to 1 half of 140 degrees, then we have an angle bisector. Now, another way to do it is to say, well, the measure of angle DAC is 70 degrees, and the measure of angle BAD is 70 degrees. It's a little bit harder to figure out the measure of angle BAD because you'd have to take the measure of angle BAC, 140, and subtract off the 70, but it would then give you that 70, giving us two angles of equal size, a bisector. Now, let's look at a segment bisector. All right, exercise number five. In the diagram below, segment CD bisects segment AB. Based on this information, which of the following pairs of segments must have the same length? Explain your choice. All right, again, if we can cut an angle in half with a ray, we can cut a segment in half with another segment. Here, we are told that segment CD bisects segment AB. That's the important statement. CD bisects AB. Now given that, we should be able to know that two segments have the same length. Which two are they? Take a moment and figure this out. All right, this is key. Whenever you're bisecting a segment with another segment, it's like one segment is the knife and the other one is the loaf of bread that's being cut in half. Specifically, the thing that is bisecting is the knife. And the thing that gets bisected is the thing that gets cut in half. CD is cutting AB in half. It's bisecting it, which means that AE and EB or BE must be the same length. That's very important because when looking at this diagram, you could very easily be like, well, I think, I mean, CE and ED look like they're the same length, and, you know, maybe AE and DE look like they're the same length. But all we know for certain from this statement is that CD cuts segment AB into two equal sized segments. All right, let's do a little more terminology in this last piece. Perpendicular. What an important piece of terminology in math. Perpendicular lines are any two lines, segments, or rays that form right angles, okay? So if I've got a line and another line that cross and form right angles, two rays that form right angles, two segments that form right angles, they're called perpendicular to one another. Let's use that piece of terminology in our last exercise of the lesson. Exercise number six. In the diagram below, A, B, and C lie on a straight line. And again, that's an important piece of information. The measure of angle EBC is 58 degrees, and the measure of angle ABD is 30 degrees. Are rays BD 
and BE perpendicular, justify your answer. All right. As always, I'd like you to play around with this and see whether or not ray BD and ray BE are perpendicular. Pause the video now. Well, ultimately speaking, right, what we're really asking is, is this angle in here, is this a right angle? Right? I'm going to put a question mark after it. It sure looks like it could be a right angle. It does. It looks like it could be a right angle. The question is, how do I know for certain? Well, again, so important that A, B, and C lie on a straight line. Because A, B, and C lie on a straight line, we know that this entire angle must be 180 degrees. It's a straight angle. So I can now add 30 and 58. Let me just do this, obviously, on the side of my paper. 30 degrees plus 58 degrees is 88 degrees. I can now take my 180 degree straight angle and subtract off 88 degrees, and I would find that that's 92 degrees. 92. So this thing is not 90, it is 92 degrees. So are they perpendicular? Well, the not subtle answer is no. The subtle answer is they're close, but still no. <laughs> so the answer is no, and the justification besides all the work we did would be because the measure of angle DBE does not equal 90 degrees. All right, very important to know that if you're told that two things are perpendicular, they form 90 degree angles or right angles. And of course, if you're told they're not perpendicular, then they don't. Let's wrap this up. All right, in this lesson, we learned some new pieces of terminology. We learned the idea of a midpoint, right? A point that lies on a segment right at the middle so that it forms two segments of equal length that are half the length of the original. We also learned about the idea of bisectors. You know, the idea of a geometric object cutting either an angle or a segment into two more of the same types of things that have the same size. And again, are one half, the measure of the original object. Finally, we saw the piece of terminology perpendicular, when two lines, rays, or segments cross and form only 90 degree angles. Again, the terminology that we introduce in this lesson will be using in almost all the geometry lessons going forward. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. Thank you.